hygiene during the era of the American frontier appeared to align with predictable norms, notably unclean. Pioneers, both men and women who traversed the expanse of North American terrain, encountered inclement weather and challenging topography. This was far from an ideal circumstance for locating bathing spots. The expedition towards uncharted territories brought forth a ceaseless endeavor to locate unpolluted water sources, a pursuit that held utmost significance. Amidst trying circumstances, the pragmatic aspects of survival frequently overshadowed concerns about cleanliness. Extended periods devoid of bathing, cohabitation in close proximities, and the scarcity of suitable restroom amenities all contributed to a lifestyle in the Wild West characterized by unpleasant odors, recurrent ailments, and a generally unclean way of life. Number 1. Mattresses might contain seam squirrels. Not all sleeping arrangements in the American West consisted of modern comforts. A substantial number featured straw and hay mattresses. These bedding choices weren't frequently replaced, which resulted in infestations by lice and various other pests. Lice, colloquially known as seam squirrels, constituted just one of the bothersome insect categories that could turn life in the Wild West into a less than sanitary experience. Flies infiltrated provisions and human waste, while mosquitoes swarmed within poorly insulated structures. Rose Pender, an individual who journeyed to the American West between 1883 and 1888, recounted an evening when her attempts at slumber were thwarted. Insects were rampant, disrupting any chance of a peaceful rest. Screens on windows were a rarity, so insects freely traveled between residences and outhouses, leaving traces of whatever they had picked up during their journeys. Number 2. Outhouses embraced unpleasant scents and insects. Back in the frontier days, outhouses played a role in daily life, although certain individuals would simply attend to nature's call amidst the trees. Outhouses were strategically constructed close to residences and homesteads, primarily for the sake of convenience and well-being. A dugout cavity was prepared, topped with a structure crafted from timber. As soon as the cavity reached its capacity, it was discreetly concealed, and the timber framework was repositioned above another pit, typically excavated in proximity. The outhouse represented an uninviting olfactory scene, prompting efforts to disguise the stench using lye or lime. Insects were abundant, particularly flies and black widow spiders, with the latter frequently prone to biting while individuals settled onto the wooden seating. The contemporary version of toilet paper had yet to come into existence, thus individuals utilized available resources, such as leaves, corn cobs, and blades of grass. Number 3. Scarcity of clean water in challenging conditions. In the era of the Wild West, access to uncontaminated water was crucial for sustenance, yet procuring pure water posed consistent challenges. On occasion, the makeshift bathrooms constructed by settlers upstream tainted the water supply, a fact not always apparent to those who depended on the neighboring streams. Furthermore, standing water enticed various insects and flies that would deposit waste and droppings while flitting above stagnant pools. Another complication arose when rainwater was collected in reservoirs, initially pristine until dust and other impurities became intermingled. In order to conserve this precious resource, individuals refrained from washing utensils and garments. Bathwater often served dual purposes, with entire families sharing a common tub of water. This practice occurred weekly, when circumstances allowed. When Rose Pender journeyed to the western frontier, she reveled in the opportunity for a rejuvenating bath, a rare indulgence she hadn't enjoyed for a span of ten days. Number 4. Animal fat or plants formed the basis of soap production when employed. In the Chronicles of the American West, a figure named Frank Clifford, who also answered to John Menham Whiteman and John Francis Wallace, penned down his recollections. As a comrade of Billy the Kid, Clifford recounted the utilization of soapweed by Mexican women for cleansing their hair. Derived from the yucca plant, soapweed root as per Clifford, was used numerous times to wash his own hair, rendering it silky, pristine, and radiant. While certain individuals opted for soapweed, pioneers crafted soap using animal fat, which was simultaneously utilized for crafting candles. The homemade soap proved abrasive and occasionally led to skin discomfort, yet the significance of soap production wasn't particularly emphasized. Unpleasant body odor was accepted as an inherent aspect of existence. Similarly, 
The notion that excessive cleanliness exposed the skin to germs and ailments provided limited incentive for frequent bathing. Number five, dental care practices in the Old West often led to tooth removal. The concept of toothbrushes, toothpaste, and dental floss was largely absent during the days of the Wild West. When a tooth caused trouble, the common solution was its extraction. Without anything resembling the contemporary dentist, individuals sought the assistance of barbers and even blacksmiths. These men would utilize tools reminiscent of pliers to extract an aching tooth. While no anesthetics were administered, a swig of whiskey was sometimes employed to alleviate the discomfort. Although there were a few methods available to prevent tooth extraction, people didn't generally prioritize maintaining oral cleanliness. At certain stagecoach rest points and public establishments, individuals would share a communal toothbrush and frequently dislodge food particles from their teeth using knives. Number 6. Utilization of Shared Towels to Clear Beer Bubbles Saloons in the untamed western frontier lacked traditional seating, yet they consistently sported lower rails for leaning, and for spittoons of course. Running across the bar's upper edge, one could find a spittoon, an extra railing, or an array of fasteners. The last two attributes were strategically placed to accommodate towels that gentlemen employed to cleanse their lips from surplus beer froth. Numerous patrons availed themselves of these towels, inadvertently facilitating the transmission of microbes and illnesses in the course of this practice. Number 6. The Widespread Dust During their journey through the western expanse, Sarah Atherton, accompanied by her spouse Jed and their offspring, encountered a situation where Sarah's eyes felt a stinging sensation, as detailed in Mary Ellen Jones's account titled, Daily Life on the 19th Century American Frontier. This discomfort arose from the omnipresent dust, which had engulfed their surroundings. From early afternoon onward, Sarah found herself squinting against the sun's glare. Her sunbonnet provided only limited relief. The prevalence of dust in the untamed western region was all-encompassing. Occurrences of dust storms and forceful gusts could propel substantial quantities of soil and filth into dwellings, all the while posing a dual threat to both livestock and settlers' well-being. Number 7. The widespread act of spitting led to legal intervention. Across the saloons scattered throughout the expanse of the western frontier, individuals would eject tobacco saliva onto the floor Finding the area adorned with spittoons and cuspidors conveniently placed along the front section of the bar. The discarded spittle was often concealed with a layer of sawdust. However, this practice proved to be troublesome as contagious respiratory illnesses such as pneumonia and tuberculosis gained momentum. Sawdust, unfortunately, served as an ideal breeding environment for harmful microorganisms. Given that saloons frequently leased out their floors to travelers seeking a place to rest, it resulted in individuals sleeping amidst the unsanitary surroundings. In a bid to curb the prevailing habit of excessive spitting, certain locales embarked on efforts to prescribe this behavior. For instance, regulations were implemented that prohibited spitting on train platforms and stations. Those found violating this rule would face penalties including fines amounting to $500, a potential imprisonment lasting for a year, or both. Number 8. Rampant Spread of Cholera and Other Diseases The prevalence of diseases was a constant issue in camps and settlements across the American West due to the fact that activities like laundry, plumbing, and dishwashing were carried out using water that was also meant for drinking. Cholera in particular was a widespread problem leading to the loss of lives among both settlers and native communities. Throughout the 19th century, numerous cholera outbreaks affected Mormon migrants, resulting in the death of countless individuals. Although the exact figures remain uncertain, these incidents were viewed by Mormons as a divine punishment and a trial of their faith. Cholera formed a part of the array of illnesses that devastated Native Americans during this time. The disease spread from overland trails to tribal societies and even reached Indian nomads. However, it's worth noting that cholera didn't claim as many lives among the native population as smallpox did. The absence of rampant disease was considered a fortunate circumstance. Sarah Raymond Herndon observed, Our camp remains entirely free from sickness. It's truly astonishing how well we all are. My hope is for this to continue. Yet, in the year 1873, good health took a downturn in at least 18 states and territories. Dr. Van Velsen, stationed in the Dakota Territory, reported an outbreak of cholera in Yankton, the territorial capital, attributed to Russian immigrants. 
He depicted these immigrants as hailing from lower classes, lacking cleanliness in both their persons and habits. Little did he realize that the cholera's spread was part of a much larger epidemic. Number nine, hair maintenance utilized whiskey and castor oil. Frank Clifford opted for a cleansing process involving soap weed for his hair, although there existed alternate methods for shampooing. Whiskey served numerous functions during the era of the Wild West, ranging from disinfection to pain alleviation. Interestingly, it even found application in hair cleansing. When combined with castor oil and lavender, this unique shampoo formula was washed out using rainwater or water treated with borax. Following a thorough brushing or combing, ladies frequently styled their hair into curls using heated pencils. Number 10. Women maintained better hygiene than men. In the Wild West, individuals like cowboys and soldiers, predominantly men, often endured extended periods without partaking in bathing rituals. They occasionally concluded their hygiene hiatus with a plunge into a nearby creek or river, a practice more frequent in the warmer months, while typically disregarded during winter. Conversely, women adhered to a more consistent routine, frequently cleansing their facial features each morning. Sarah Raymond Herndon documented her daily ritual of visiting the spring for a refreshment, engaging in the ritual of washing her face and hands in the refreshing water, occasionally gathering a bouquet for breakfast before returning to camp. Nevertheless, due to limited privacy and a prevailing sense of modesty, such practices rarely extended beyond this basic regimen. Maintenance of clothing hygiene also showcased a gendered disparity. Cowboys and soldiers, often going through prolonged stretches without garment cleaning, occasionally resorted to laundering their attires by the banks of streams, rivers, or comparable water bodies.